I will use more of the English this afternoon. We have so many ups and downs in our life. If someone can come and ask me, brother, there is there is a news, good and bad. Better than only you you want the good news first or the bad news first? For me, I will say maybe bad news first. Because if I hear the bad news first, I know that the good news is coming. So bad news King is a good news moment, don't let that will recover again. So I will choose bad news first and the second will be good news. I have realized that disciples had a crazy week. Can you imagine the beginning of the week? They are coming into Jerusalem. Everybody was shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna! The king is coming! Hosanna, Hosanna! Jesus is the Messiah. The disciples are like, finally, huh? They, these people, they know that the king is coming. These people, we were telling them. Somebody had been telling you, ah, Jesus is the king, but they didn't listen. Now, we are saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Ramalilu, they will be thinking that uh, now people, they have, it's worth it. We have told. So finally, they recognize that he is the Messiah. So, they thought that since the week that they entered, they were shouting Hosanna, Hosanna. They felt that, oh, this is going to be great. People, people, they have realized that the king, the king is Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. But we know, we know that things happen in different ways. Then you know, Tuesday game comes, your Wednesday comes, there is a talking about how to arrest Jesus. And then the Thursday, the Passover, Jesus gets on his feet. He started to wash, oh, uh, he started my he washed the feet of his disciples. And it's like, you know, that this crime is okay. It is okay. Yeah. Everything is going to be okay. And you king on the kind of then you go to the Garden of Gethsemane and there the betrayer. Jesus is arrested. And you are like, hey, what's going on? We have started well. What is going on? And then the Friday comes and it's the trials. It's the sentence. It's the death of Jesus. And you were like, how do we go from this place of worship, popularity, and acceptance to a place where he is brutally killed on the cross? This is not what we anticipated. And it's a moment where you have to paint yourself and you're like, is this really happening to us? It's like you go to bed on Friday hoping that you wake up on Saturday and realize it was all a bad dream. But we wake up on the morning, Saturday morning realizing this is your new reality. The disciples marry the ladies at the cross all went through the greatest despair, the greatest depression of their life. You know, Saturday for them was a day of dissolution. Dissolution, it was a day of shattered dreams. It was a day of hopelessness. They were like, oh, Hosanna, 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 Sada, Ami, Zainarme. Hello, they thought that everything is going to 
be okay. Everything is going to be well from now. We have our king. Because people, they realize that it's the Messiah and the Messiah is coming. But the things change, uh, change upside down. Their dreams were shattered. Saturday is a day of a dream for them when it comes to reality. Friday by the Bunizu, this whole week said, Bunizu, Katam, Katam, and Wiliari, and I get them away. So, maybe you also have experienced hopelessness because of the trials in your life, in your life that were beyond your control. You were abused. Maybe there are a sicknesses or of a loss of a job or maybe it's even a divorce that you have gone through. Ano yung life kila? Ano yung lung? Ano yung dayong malita? Ano yung akinso ba face tiba nila? Experience tiba nila? Ninga man siya. Sometimes when we wake up, our throat used to have a sore throat, right? Sometimes when we wake up, we used to get a dream. I was so shocked when one of my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, when he fell down with the pressure, he said, "Call Elmer." Let him bring his car and then let him take me to hospital. That very day, I was sleeping in the uh, in the afternoon. It was in the afternoon. I was sleeping peacefully. I I say like I told myself, I'm so tired. I will just put my phone in silent and then I'll sleep. My brother-in-law was calling my name again and again. Call Albert. Call Albert. Call Albert. Let him bring his car and then let him take me to the hospital. I got around 13 missed calls in my phone. The moment I woke up, he is no more. Even the disciples, they have had this kind of experience. When they came along with Jesus to Jerusalem, entering the Jerusalem, people were, people were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, and they were like, oh, this is everything. We have the popularity. We have acceptance from the people. Very weak. The whole very weak. They have seen the rejection from the people. Those were those people who were shouting Hosanna were the one who started rejecting Jesus. It's a kind of a nightmare for them. Likewise, many of us, I have experienced that the death of my brother-in-law and many of us might have experienced in different ways i mean a lot of people they have put their hope in government it can be economy it can be money it can be their spouses it can be safety it can be people we put our out hope into something only to once again that is and we should not get in a misery even. They are the guy who is the good hope they believe. And often we discourage. And this is where the story takes. Mark chapter 16. It says, when the Sabbath, Sabbath was over, over. You like the Sabbath is over. Yes, man. That was a rough Sunday for the disciples. And it's interesting because. Now they are, they are going to anoint the body of Jesus like Jesus mentioned so many times that he would die but on the third day he will rise again. That through with us we hear, we can hear a message three, four times and we forget. I want to share an example of a preacher. Jesus had been sharing, I will die, I will die for you, I will die for you on the cross. I'm going to sacrifice for you. And I'm going to rise from the dead. I'm, I'm going to rise from the dead after three days. He has been mentioning about this and then he has been reminding this to the people. Likewise, a pastor, a 
church was looking for a new pastor. So the, the new pastor came in and the first Sunday he shared a sermon. The next Sunday he came again, he shared the same sermon. The third Sunday he came again, he shared the same sermon. So the church elders, they were like, oh, pastor, now your sermon is sign. Now sermon is sign. Why do you need to repeat again and again and again and again? There you go, pastor. Ako sermon na na, repeat unless you I see a changes in our members Jesus he had been sharing about his death on the cross rising from the dead after three days disciples were following after him listening to him and he's been reminding again and again that there is no Jesus they did not give gave any hint to that we know Good Friday comes every year. Palm Sunday comes every year. But we know that on Good Friday Jesus is being crucified. We know that Jesus is raised again from the dead today. But we as human beings we will all go back again and then sit on our chair. Sometimes we think and then we will pray for one day, two days. We will, from today, I will read the Bible. Next Sunday, I will go to church. The next Sunday, if your friend asks whether you are coming to church, if your friend says no, maybe, maybe I will go. The next Sunday, if your friends, if you call your friend again, and if your friend says no, then when is the Sunday when I will not die? Everybody. See now, today we have been hearing about uh, Easter, we have been hearing about the Good Friday, everything. But where do we put our hope? Are we still living in the hopelessness? Are we still there in the same hopeless situation? I, in the, in the, uh, the first place I told how many of you believe that there is a hope? Everyone, everybody, raise your hands. Let that hope in there in you. There is a, their hope is death. He is buried. There is nothing else. Some of you are like this woman. 
you have come to this Esther service maybe like the place of just like maybe you are in a place of complete hopelessness maybe you are thinking you are looking at your life and who will roll this stone away in my life maybe some of you have put your meat at the cross right there you realize that what I have is so big that I don't know that anybody can help, anybody can do anything, or maybe would that be because you are in this great place in your life? Or maybe you are looking at your heart this Sunday service and you are you realize, man, my sin is so great, my anxiety is so big, like nothing can change me. I'm so deep in my addiction in my life. Maybe they had a discussion who will roll that stone the big stone that woman was asking them and they were discussing who will roll the big stone it's very big that they can't roll likewise many of us like that woman maybe we have come inside this church this afternoon with that heavy Heavy laden now back. Maybe because of your job. Maybe because of your work. Maybe because of your husband. Maybe because of your wife. Maybe your boyfriend drinks too much. Maybe your relationship problem. Maybe a problem with your in-laws. We think that no one can roll away that storm from our back. No one can take away that heavy storm from us. And many of us are seated in this manner right now. But I love this, what the Bible says. That when they got in Mark's history, it says, but when they looked up, they say the stone which was very large had been rolled away as they entered the tomb. They saw you, man, dressed in white robes, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. See, the angels removed. Angel was there rolling away the stone, and it says, The man who is inside is no more. This is going to happen this afternoon. Matthew says in 28, Matthew 28, verse 2, it says, He goes there, was a violent earthquake because an angel of the Lord descended from the heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. See, the angels came and removed the obstacle that was in their path. But the thing that they were worried about, they were like, who can do? See, God can do. I just say, there is nothing, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is, people think that we cannot do this. People think that this is too heavy for me. We think that this I cannot carry anymore. But God can do things which is impossible for human beings. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Can I hear this? Nothing is impossible with God. Everyone? Can I hear a bit louder? Nothing is impossible. Yes, nothing is impossible with God. God can do anything. And the angel says to them in Mark chapter 16, verse 6, he goes on, Don't be alarmed. He said, You are looking for Jesus the Nazareth, who were crucified, but he has risen. He is not here. See the place where you laid him. See, if the resurrection never happened, his disciples would have been continued to live a life being defined by the Saturday. Saturday might
Excellent. Am I amazing? We, we, we know. We have been hearing about Good Friday. We have been hearing about uh, Palm Sunday. We have been hearing about the Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We believe, but we don't trust. So if we don't have that trust, how can that living hope be in your life? When we believe and when we have trust upon the Lord, there is an exchange. Exchange to do there. I'm not going to know that. 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 In Romans chapter 8 verse 11, What happens is that when you begin to believe that Jesus died for you, when you begin to trust Him, see what happens in this. The Spirit of God, now God said from the very beginning, I will dwell in them. The Spirit of God comes inside your heart and begin to change you. The same way how you took Jesus from a Saturday into a Sunday, from that and in the same way, the Spirit of God, who begins to live in me, begins to transform my life. He begins to change from the inside out. It takes me from the dead hole to the living hole. When you believe, Saturday man, who hopes a God, eh? But if you only believe that Jesus is going to raise from the dead, that that hope is going to change into living hope. And today we are here with a living hope. Many of us, we have been living. And we say, Apo, we don't get a bomb in them. We say, I say, Apo, life is a tough time. In the moment, a mouse, give something, I say, because we love. They were letting me tell him. My brother came yesterday. I want to tell you the truth. He's in he's an army. And he's been called immediately by the his platoon. Saying you have to come back by tomorrow itself. He came, he was drunk. So I said, You're coming to pass this place. Why did you come in this manner? He said, I'm gonna hide. I'm not gonna tell anyone. I told him, your liver, you are not going to live long. Then he said, I have no hope anymore, so I'm drinking. We are living in that hope. That hope, katsaida hope na, katsaida kanlum na ka, di ba na abuso sa, ni, 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 But whether we are in that living hope, whether we are trying to climb to that living hope by believing, Nothing to do. Just believe. Just follow him. Or are we still there like the disciples on that Saturday? Shattered Saturday. A very powerful theologian said, Living between the two coming of Christ, Christians are to look backward and forward. Back to the major cross and the empty tomb, where my salvation was won for them, but also forward to the meeting of Christ beyond beyond this world. Their personal res resurrection and the joy of being with their Savior in glory forever. Because though the Christian life is regularly marked more by suffering than the triumph. Our hope and our mood should be one of the inequivalent, inquenchable confidence. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 1, here and Abraham said, Jesus Christ, our hope, it means that I can confidently come to Him and completely trust Him. Trust that He was not just a philosopher who came into this world and brought us some teaching. No, He is the Messiah, He is the Lord. He is our life and everything that He says is actually true. Temple, 
Even at this very present Johnston generation, we are seeing so many things happening which is already written in the Bible. We are on the victory, not because we overcome that we should not. We are on the victory side, not because we overcome that, but because Jesus overcame that. It is through Jesus Christ that we overcame today, that we overcome today. Christians' hope is resting in the victory of Jesus. Ano ko victory na? Ano ilu ko victory na? Jesus buda ano yez? Mayu na ni lumbang today. But also Christian hope. He cares for his people, and eventually will bring us to himself. See the cross tells us of our past, but the resurrection tells us about our future. And if Jesus started a work in you, He will bring it to a completion. Like this is the promise and the hope that we have in Christ. The cross will tell your past, but the resurrection tells us about our future. So if Jesus started working in your life, if Jesus started working and if you accept Christ, come to me. Come, Lord. I'm just opening this for you. And let Jesus, if if you let Jesus work, start working in you, He will bring it to completion. That's what I mean. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, he says, If our hope in Christ is only for the life of for things to go well, for a good job, it is only for this life then we are more to be pitied. We are miserable. See, he likes it. anyone in this world because our hope goes beyond this earthly life. Being a Christian, being a believer, if you don't believe and if you don't trust, your hope will just lies within this world. But for a believer, your hope lies even beyond this world. The woman, they responded by going and telling others, telling the disciples. The disciples, they responded. The resurrection by going around the world, obeying Jesus' great, Jesus great commission. When there is, when we have experienced that, when we, when you believe in the resurrection, you can't really live the same way you lived before. If you really believe in the resurrection today, you should stop living in that past life. That's what I want to tell you. You should stop saying that I will not go to church even if pastor invites you. You should stop saying that this church doesn't have a spirit spirit within this church. You have the spirit. The spirit is you. I heard people saying that Saving Church doesn't have the spirit. What kind of spirit do you want? You want do you want a spirit where I'll just say and then you fall. The spirit is with you. The spirit is with each and every individual. The moment you accepted Christ, the moment you say Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, the Spirit is with you. If you come, the Spirit is there. If you don't come, the Spirit is not there. My Spirit is there. Your Spirit is not there. You got my point? You are a church. Verse 7, coming to an end. Verse 7. Go and tell his disciples what a wonderful touch. What a gentle, tender word that is. Go tell the disciples. 
but also tell Peter. You know who Peter is, right? He denied Jesus Christ three times. But still then he said, go, go, go the other disciple, go and tell the other disciples. And tell even Peter. We have sinned. Peter has sinned. Peter has done something that if in, in case if I happen to be in Jesus' position, I would say, Peter, Peter is wrong. 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 If I have to think about uh, in, uh, human, humanly thinking, I would say, don't tell Peter. You can tell the rest of the disciples, but don't tell Peter, okay? Then I'm reason. But still then, Jesus. Still then, it says, tell the rest of the disciples and even tell Peter. So what a tender, what a tender, what a gentle, tender word that is, right? We think that we are nobody. I am nobody. I am just finished, nothing like my brother. But Jesus, he still have a heart for the sinners like you, like me, for every one of us. Can you imagine what Peter is feeling? This moment and the angels are like go tell the disciples but also making an emphasis on Peter each one of us can know him personally intimately it's not the pastor who is going to bring God and you to have an intimate relationship a close relationship each and every individual person who are here this afternoon, you can have that intimate relationship with God. Like father, like daughter, like father, like son, like a friend, like a brother, like a sister. As you look into the resurrection, that you would believe. That you would believe that it is for you. That this faith, this belief, would be our relationship. It would be our trust. It's where you can say, I am going to entrust my life completely to you this afternoon. If you can have all of you. I want to invite I want to invite you all to stand on your feet. Shall we all stand?